Y'all, I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> Y'all, the second I opened this goddamn app, I forgot that I needed to react to another story. I'm so stupid, yo. Oh, God. How could I forget this fast about my man, Ram? How? I mean, I guess <laughs> he's not the red flag, Amrit, so I guess I forgot. <laughs> I hate myself again. Yeah, no normal intro for this one, because uh, it's been a while. Song of the Crimson Nile, finally. I'm so excited for this. After all, uh, Remao finally was dealt with. He actually said, I'm doing it the Chinese style and I'm killing myself. I'm offing myself. And Ramesses has finally came back after 84 years. Like, I actually thought that the author completely made this man just vanish, like, into nothingness. Because I think it's almost a season that we haven't seen this man. So I'm intrigued to know what will happen this episode. Season 2, episode 9. Eva has no idea where her desire to achieve her goal will take her. A winding path leads to places nobody ever leaves alive. Oh, now that I remember... The I forgot his name, god damn it. Or favorite god and or boyfriend got handsy last episode with each other. Does Orman know? Does he know what our plan is with Set? Episode 9. A chai's mercy. God damn it, y'all. <laughs> Agnia tends like a hound, looking steadily at Ramesses. Oh, she don't know him, right? She had no reason to trust him, even though he was no fighter. His proximity to the woman made it easy for him to attack them. Orion, who had been lying at Eva's feet, jerked his head and pricked up his ears. I mean, he remembers Ramesses, or not? Oh my god, he angry. Calm down, my boy. Eva laid a soothing hand on the dog's head. Does he not remember Ramesses? Oh, Ramesses? Yeah, I guess he doesn't. But Eva trusted him. The first thing she noticed was his appearance. He looked clean and healthy, so she breathed a faint sigh of relief. Lately, she had been tormented by thoughts about him. I had these thoughts every single episode. I don't think I said it every single episode, but majority of the time, I asked it so many times. Where was Ramesses? She wondered whether he was all right, where he was, whether he managed to find his brother. He had intended... He had indeed managed to find Remao, but they hadn't been together long. I mean, honestly, didn't Ramesses leave back then out of fear that Remao was that out of his mind that he was coming for his own brother too? Isn't that the reason he left in the first place? I mean, he left before our friend got executed, or more like during the procession of her execution. Because when the execution happened, we were with or now bestie. Like, Ramesses was nowhere in sight back then. He was already gone. Eva had no real brothers or sisters. However, after Ismen's death, she knew what it was like to see her sibling die. And she felt genuinely sorry for Ramesses. I mean, your brother is and remains your brother, but... He doesn't really deserve the title to be called a brother after what he pulled. But I do want to believe that at least a little bit of the love that he had for Ramesses was real. I mean, I did say in the last episode that the author is really trying to desperately make us forgive Remao after the bullshit he pulled with us and with his own brother. Just like another author is desperately trying to make me forgive Dimitri and Anna and Greg and not have me be alone with my fine ass man, Kane. But in this story, it was like that too. Like, don't get me wrong, like these authors lately. And I actually want to believe, not for Remao's sake, but for Ramesses' sake. 
because Ramesses has always been pure-hearted and he has always looked out for us. He may have been a little in denial when it came to his brother, but he had good interests at heart when it came to us. So I hope for Rem uh, Ramesses that Remao actually truly and genuinely cared about him and that he actually sacrificed himself because he didn't want to take his own brother down with him. I wish that for him, even though his brother had tried to kill her. Agnia put out her hand, shielding Eva. No, girl, it's fine. I guess she really doesn't remember or she never met him. Like, it's been a while. Like, if one of you knows, like, please tell me in the comments, when did Ramesses leave? I know it was in the first season, but I don't remember when. But Eva gently moved it away. She didn't need protecting. Before saying anything, Eva took a step toward him and grabbed his hands. I was worried about you. Praise be to Ra, you're alive. I was worried about you too. I heard you ran away from the settlement and they were looking for you everywhere. She pulled away. Why are you watching everything from afar and then sneaked in here? Agnia really don't remember, huh? Yes, my brother told me to sit back and wait. He only wanted to set fire to the Ibu and flee. They actually were in contact. The hell? That's all. That seemed very strange to Eva. I'd like to believe you're not lying. Just sit back and wait. What a simple to ask you were <laughs> This sass. Um... At this point, I don't want to use Sass because it's been a while since we've seen him. So actually, I'd like to believe you're not lying. Like that you actually allowed us to be in the middle of the flames and you just decided to sit back in the corner and have your popcorn ready. Why would I lie? Why did Ramao take you here? Just to watch? What for? Oh, they came together? I thought that... Uh, Ramesses was actually following Remao because he wanted like to find ways to make his brother see reason. Because Remao was that desperate in killing us. So since the relationship between us and Ramesses was good, I actually believed that Ramesses was following Remao around. And when he saw that we were about to be killed by his brother, he decided that it was time that he couldn't hide any longer and he went in to protect us you know because we did see him next to us before he like tried to get close to Remao before he killed himself there is no reason he just wanted me to be around he thought that if he got caught and I was left in the hideout alone someone worse than the hunters might get to me how are you going to escape all the outskirts are patrolled Remus at connections one person has been helping us and she's been hiding us all this time she ramus is saying slowly to his knees and a deep wrinkle formed between his eyebrows he tried to hold on as best he could but he was still haunted by the sight of the blood slash across his brother's throat Agnia's doubtful gaze made Ramesses hesitant to keep talking. It was hard for him to recover so quickly, and even harder under her scrutiny. I mean, she is not really making it easy, but now that I remember, she is an assassin. So, of course, considering the fact that she never really had the opportunity to have Ramesses' name cleared in her book, she's in on the defense when it comes to him because he was gone if you mean us no harm why did you sneak in here are you afraid that the episodes will catch you won't he he was ready to torture him until dawn why would it be any different for me i can torture you too but you weren't afraid you're not like that Ramo told me about it path of cunning your brother could have said anything to you, Ram. Was there ever a moment in his life when he was completely honest? Um, <laughs> She's trying to smack the shit out of him. Don't say that. You don't know what he had to go through for me. 
Um, yeah, I think we're done here. Because at this point, considering that even though he never behaved really like a brother, but more like a parent or whatever it is, um, that's knowing that his brother just died, the wound is still fresh and he still needs time to recover. So right now he's on the defense. So if you actually try to tell him the truth, right now he's in the state of denial. He's not really gonna listen to it. So what did he say about me? But the episodes particularly enjoys killing dark magicians. He lives by his work and enjoys it. But you have your own task and you won't torture me for no reason. Ramesses ran his fingers through his long dark hair which fell onto his shoulders. I love his hair. Even noticed that it seemed shorter and the necromancer's clothes were plainer. The road and the chase had changed him. I can't believe that he took his own life. Baby, these are the facts. Ramesses couldn't stand it and rested his trembling hands on the ground. His eyes were empty, haunted, dead. What did I say? Denial. He was now all alone, like Eva. But I mean, they do have each other. But again, family is family. You can't really choose it. But since your family is like there since day one, whether they treat you well or not, you still grow fond of them. And no matter how hard you try to separate yourself from them, this pain will always be there within you because you still grew attached to them over the course of the years, even if they didn't treat you well. Because in your eyes, especially if you value family, you're like, but he's my dad, but she's my sister. Like, I can't just leave them alone. Like, there's always this thing pulling you back to them. It was difficult for Agnia to show sympathy for her. Rema was no more than a prey that needed to be caught. Partially, amen, sis. But it's a different thing for Ramesses. It was his brother. But even the wandering mercenary was no stranger to those feelings. She sat down lazily on the fabrics that covered the ground and said... Your fate is inevitable, but Chai must be kind to you, since you're still alive, and not lying next to your brother in a pool of your own blood. Chai means predestination, and was also the name of the god of abundance and destiny, who determined the span of each person's life. Damn! Ramesses looked up at Agnia, but when he saw that she wasn't laughing but speaking honestly, he nodded dejectedly. She knows, like, just because she is a mercenary doesn't mean that she's completely numb. Like, she does feel. I knew he didn't have much time left. He's been... He was acting strangely. Eva carefully sat down next to Ramses, trying to speak as quietly as possible so that they wouldn't be disturbed. How so? What happened to you two? Y'all, like, there is another thought in my head. And... Honestly, I hope that they're not being dramatic like this, but we know that Remao was dancing to someone else's tune. So, could it be possible that the man that we're trying to hunt down actually told him that he needed to kill us? And especially, like, if you all have, like, watched fantasy movies or series, whatever. Like, bitches be bitches. Maybe... This man gave him visions of how he would be capable to manipulate his mind to the point where he would make Remao kill his own brother in cold blood. And sooner or later, the fear that him actually losing control over himself or being manipulated and controlled by that bitch was too much. He decided that he was willing to do whatever it took in order to make this man stop playing with his mind. And when he got caught, he's like, either this or that. So it's not really that painful for me if I should die. I really hope that's not the case because I hate how these authors are like trying to twist things in order to make us, the viewers, or more like the people that read her their stories forgive characters that actually traumatized or a character just like they're doing in heaven's secret requiem i forgive nothing 
Especially now that they were actually dramatic as fuck and actually said, yeah, we're making Dimitri be an immune. Hell no. Ramis has turned to Eva to look her in the eyes. Pale blue like the sky on the brightest day. That was how he remembered them, the way they had been in the days of their training, when the main reason to be upset for Ramesses and Eva was a scolding or evening punishment from Remao in the Temple of Thoth. Young, laughing, silly, and careless, things were now different. They were on the outskirts of Tivas, tired, alone, and scared, and the glow in Eva's eyes had dimmed. Ramesses hadn't seen a smile on her round, beautiful face for a very long time either. But despite everything that had happened, they were sitting side by side again and they did as they did in the past. Although a port of Ramesses had died with his brother, Eva support eased his grief. He finally said, Rima promised me that everything would be fine. He said he wouldn't hurt you. He just wanted the body. Why would he want that damn body? And actually, the betrayal that he wouldn't even allow Eastman to find peace. He actually said, burn it. She said, burn it. Yes. And I know I said she. Because he was acting like a little bitch. Like, he said, I'm not allowing you to find any bees because you were the reason all this was orchestrated in the first place. If you wouldn't have died, she wouldn't have felt the need to actually find out what happened to you. When he was the one that actually orchestrated all this bullshit. Hell no. We know that. We also know that he killed himself out of fear of a certain person. Do you know who that is? Ramos's face expressed not the slightest trace of emotion. Yes, his mentor. He appeared recently, and since then, my brother has not been himself. He actually said you kill him and her, or we're done. It all comes down to him, said. He was Remau's mentor in Eamon's dream. It's unlikely that much has changed since then. We're all looking for him. He un he unites us. Everyone will be interested to hear what Ramesses has to say. Honestly, I'm as much petrified as I am intrigued slash turned on by this legend Hemsed. Y'all, imagine that he's like <laughs> Malbonte. <laughs> Living in the shadows, everyone fearing this man, everyone wants his ass. And when he shows up, he first off destroys every single one of you and he grows weak for us. That's hilarious. Let's get out from under the canopy and tell Eamon and Livius that you're here. No, I don't know for sure what Eamon will want to do to me. That's why I came to you first, to tell him that I'm here yet. Agnia threw up her hands. He doesn't care about you. He's only interested in the one who's behind the covers of Tibis and belongs to the secret Sashmu circle. If you have something useful to tell, he'll have mercy on you, not rush to torture you. Be wise and use this to your advantage. Agnia put her hand into a lying bag, searched for a moment, and then took out a jug familiar to Eva. Thank you, ma'am. I need that one. Here's what we're going to do. I'll go out to see what the others are doing and whether those two have started fighting again, in case Livius turns out to be a lousy negotiator. <laughs> I'll give them a drink and assess the situation, and then you'll come out. That's a good idea, Agnia. Honestly, I love her. She said, you know what? Fine by me. I'm taking a little bit of alcohol and I'm having all of them be wasted before you come out. This way, it will lose their tongue, like they will be relaxed, and then everything will be fine. I love her. Or maybe I should stay with you. We've seen what his brother is capable of, and I'm growing fond of you, Kitty. I love Agnia. It's all right. Are you worried about me? Of course, you are so sweet and nice and weak. Damn! But I mean, mentally, she's not wrong. We're kind of unstable, especially when it comes to Eastman. And especially now that he has been burned to ashes, of course we would be a little vulnerable. I'm afraid to leave you alone with him. He won't hurt me. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Agnia smiled bravely at Eva before walking out from under the canopy. I mean, if it actually was like that, that Ramis is left before Agnia actually got the chance to get to know him, then 
I wouldn't be surprised that she doesn't know if she should trust him or not. Eva was left alone with Ramesses. There was a brief silence between them. Eva was afraid to say something wrong. She knew better than anyone what it was like to lose a loved one. She knew that no words would help ease the pain from the huge festering wound that opened in your chest after such a thing. Ramesses noticed how thoughtful and serious she looked. I don't need anything. I'm fine. You're anything but fine. You can't be fine. I know what it's like. Such grief burns your soul away, leaving it barren. You should be glad he's dead. I mean, am I glad a person like him is dead? Partially, yes. Am I glad that a human soul was lost in darkness and that he actually died protecting someone that he truly cared about? No, because I want to believe everyone is worthy of being saved. And I said it so many times already. I don't condone physical violence nor psychological torture. And in my eyes, there's always another way but death. So am I happy that this man is out of the story? Yes, Am I happy why it happened or that it actually had to happen? No. It caused you so much trouble. Knowing this, I understand that all your words are not sincere. I'd rather hear nothing than lies. Wow, Ramis says, but what did I say? That's not true. I'm sorry that things ended this way. At the moment of Ramal's death, all I could think about was how kind he had been to me. You're right, he did me a great deal of harm, but I'm not lying. My mentor's death doesn't make me happy. Just because he didn't treat me well doesn't mean that I grow resentful, son. I'm sorry about everything that happened. Don't be looking at me. Like, the reason that people suffer in the first place when something like this happens is because they truly care. And the thing that they feel is not hate or resentment. It's pain. We are sad that things turn out this way because we actually grew fond of you. And that's why we then grow like resentful or we show like this angry facade. But we're not actually angry. We don't actually hate you. We are hurt. Ramesses looked away. Eva knew that Ramesses probably wanted to take a breath and mourn his brother at least a little. But circumstances didn't allow for that. She'd been much more fortunate. The whole settlement had sympathized with Eva when Eastman had died, and she was given a few days to grieve alone. It must have been so painful for Ramesses. He couldn't do even so little as that. He had no one to share his grief with. I'm for them. This is a difficult time for me as well, but Ramesses has it much worse than me. And instead of grieving, he has to keep everything bottled up inside since he can't relax and talk to anyone here. He doesn't have any friends here, just me. Eva had it easier. Eastman was already dead, and the sight of his burning body didn't break her spirit as much as the day she had seen him dead on the shore. That uh, was, uh, like, I'm still shocked about that. Like, I did not expect that. And unlike Remel, who remained lying on the spot where he had taken his own life, Eastman was mummified. Recent events had made Eva stronger, and she managed to use her strength to drown out her thoughts and give some attention to Ramesses. After all, she was being honest and truly didn't rejoice at Rimao's death. It hurt and scared her, and she only remembered the moments when her mentor had helped her and taught her everything. I feel like he actually lost himself. And bringing the fact that he was actually petrified of Hempstead actually makes me... Can I say pity? I don't really remember, or in general, we don't really know what happened or how Hempstead was behaving towards Remao or what he actually threatened in order to have this man so scared. But in general, do I feel bad? Yes, I do. Because I have a heart. He played an even bigger role in Ramis' life, being his only family, and there was probably a lot more going on between them that Eva didn't know about. Eva plucked up the courage to reach out and put her hand on Ramis' shoulder. She squeezed it slightly and then caressed it gently. 
After a moment's thought, Ramesses covered her fingers with his hand. Thank you, if you're being sincere. I am. No one's death will please me. And despite everything Ramal has done, I'm still grateful to him for giving me a place to live and the chance to study. Then I'm really sorry for your loss, too. I really am. I feel so bad. He just wanted someone that cared about this man after the bullshit that he pulled. <laughs> I feel bad. Huh? I'm sorry about what happened to his body. Did you know what Rem was planning? Yes, but he was faced with a choice. Him or you? Huh? All right, then it really does not make any sense. Oh, hold the fucking phone. No, no, no. Hold. Maybe it was really like that. Remal sacrificed himself. He sacrificed himself for Ramesses. Because from the way that Ramesses is speaking right now, that means... That Ramesses was there when Hem said kind of like uh, intimidated Remao in order to make a choice. So he had to kill me after all. Either kill you or get rid of Eastman's party. I couldn't prevent it. I wanted you to stay alive, so... <laughs> Considering he was already dead. <laughs> but in general, it still don't make any sense. Like, why either me or him... Maybe because we are a necromancer, so we actually have the capability to, co to communicate with him, and that would have meant that we would have found out what happened to him, etc. And he was like, if you get rid of the body, he can't find peace and everything, so she won't get answers, and the truth won't come out to the light. I understand. Whoever is behind all the scared Remao so much that he chose death. I can't blame you. Still, I'm sorry. I know how much you wanted to get in touch with him, find out everything. I will. Trust me, I will. Amen, sis. Ramesses didn't argue with her, although as a necromancer he knew it was almost impossible. Now we have both lost our loved ones. We're walking hand in hand as usual. And I'm so happy you're back, bitch. I have loved ones. As with these men, we don't have to share blood. Amen, my good sis. <laughs> I love how they are using the story like to say we have two families. One, the one you are born into, which can also mean that they don't actually love you. We saw like what uh, her mom did to her. Like, we can't really call Eva having a family. We really can't. And then on the other side, we got the family that we choose. And Ramesses is one of those people. Eastman was one of those people. And Livius is also one of those people. I don't know how to make friends, unlike you. With Seth's appearance, I can't tell if Eamon thinks of me as a loved one. There is still a lot we haven't discussed. Maybe he'll never want to see me again. Will you stop that at this point? He has shown that he cannot get rid of your sorry ass as much as he tries. We were gone, y'all, for half a day. And this one said we are looking for her. She's not running away. Can Seth be considered a person close to me? Even if not, I won't be alone. He made that clear. You have me, that's something. Even more than I need. I love Ramesses. The two Sheshmu smiled at each other. Aww. There's a silver lining to all this. I found you safe and sound, which is hard to believe considering you next to name it. <laughs> Happens. I was useful to him. He promised to be merciful if I helped him. What are you supposed to help him with? Pat, your brother. <laughs> I'm not mad. The mercenary is right. Shy will that we were on opposite sides. Now everything has changed. Yes, Agnia is very nice. You just don't know her well enough yet. All I want right now is some peace and to be alone. I'm sure you'd like that too, if it were possible. That would be great, but they're waiting for us outside. Thanks for talking to me. I was on edge. 
I think you're still a little out of it. Thank you. <laughs> and Amasis will remember that you supported him. You are true friends and you can count on him. You're welcome, Ramesses. I really like Ramesses. Like, just to put in my opinion, I really do. And if it was like us or Eastman, as much as it would hurt us, but we are still alive and we have no idea what Hempstead is capable of. We heard a few things that this man has done in his life, like actually being responsible for Eamon's parents' death. But that's all we know. Like, we haven't met this man in person. We don't know if he has, like, this evil aura. If he's actually capable to hide himself from the god of war. He's actually capable to hide from this man. We have no idea what he's capable of. So, can I be mad that Ramesses was like, as long as she stays alive? Because... We are still alive. Eastman sadly is not. And as much as Ramis is cared about Eastman, he's like, he is dead. She is not. So she actually has like priority because she's still alive. They didn't have much time left. Agnia should have talked to everyone by then. You said you know why Remao took his own life. He said that he was more afraid of his mentor than anyone else. So he'd better take his life than get tortured by the episodes or face his mentor. Do you know him? Have you seen him? That. Yes, but it has been a long time. He left Tibis a few years ago. He is somewhere in the area now, but my brother keeps... kept me away from him. I haven't met him. Wow. Okay. Again... I really want to believe that he truly cared about Ramesses. I wish it for Ramesses. And in general, the more we start to talk about Rimao and like how uh, scary Hempstead could have been, I'm starting to feel guilty for Rimao and what he had to go through. Like actually being uh, confronted with like your worst nightmare every single day would make even the smallest person pop. I said it in my The Vampire Diaries reaction. Remao still spoke of Remao as if he were alive. Yeah, he is processing. And every time he corrected himself, he realized that his brother was truly gone. But I saw what the Shishma did to my brother. For the last few days, he's been like a hunted animal, jumping at every noise. Damn, I hate it. I hate the story for making me feel bad. It seems to me that Rem even wanted to die, as death would bring him long-awaited peace. Maybe it really was the best outcome for him. What's his name? Rem's mentors. A llama fears and expectations rose in her throat, even knew whose name she would hear. A Sheshmu, an associate of Remao, who lived in Tibes a few years before. His name is... Samon. He's a one or a mansa, right? That's right. Do you know him too? What did my brother tell you? Of course, the one who murdered Amo is because he was opposing the ban on dark magic. Remao's mentor says runaway servant and the murderer of Eamon's parents are all the same person. I can't. This man stirred so much shit. I am so intrigued to meet him. It all fits. Ramis is nodded. I know that he demanded that my brother get rid of Eastman's body or kill you for one reason only. To stop me from finding out what happened the night the Nile turned crimson. Yes, but there is one thing I don't understand. Me too, sis. What is it? Why Samo was so desperate to get to Livius. He ordered my brother to bring the healer to him by any means. You knew about this, didn't you? What? Seeing Eva's astonishment, Ramesses was also surprised. So he was the one that orchestrated for Livius to be killed. You didn't know he needed Livius? I thought that was the only reason he ran away with you. Who else would he expose himself to the hunters like that? We thought someone wanted to kill him. 
Viva got straight to the point. Livy is revealed that he was being followed, and then someone killed a hunter instead of him right at the house where he lived. I think he wanted to get to Livius, but he didn't get to him because the hunter like was in front of this man's house, you know, as some sort of protection after what happened to Eastman. That's why he ran away with me. Ramos's eyes widened. So that's how it is. But someone didn't order for him to be killed, only captured. I don't understand. So the hunter was killed on purpose? Or was it not Simon's doing? Simon needed Livius alive? And what if he still needs him? Oh no! Eva wanted to run outside and immediately share everything with Livius. Me too. Meanwhile, outside. Is he still here? Please tell me he's still here. Amy was sitting on a beam, allowing the healer to help him. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> God damn it. He had been silent the whole time, not taking his dark, heavy gaze of said, Damn! The latter had refused help and preferred something else to her boy. It's, I can't with this man. You are lying. That's decent. I am weak, said. Uh, I've been saving this for a special occasion. <laughs> I'm actually living my best life. Don't frown, the epistates. You'll make it worse. Eamon shifted his gaze to Livius to say they disliked each other would have been an understatement. But in the current situation, the hunter preferred the company of the healer to everyone else, which was something he could hardly believe himself. Although Livius could feel a slight tension coming from Eamon, he did everything carefully and attentively so as not to cause him pain. He asked quietly so that only the apostates could hear. Why is she drinking with him? Isn't she on your side? We have the same goal, but we're not allies. Is Agnia not afraid of him at all? Eamon turned his gaze back to Sid. He's fed. Who was he? Not a human, that was clear. But what kind of entity? What forces did he ally with to become who he was? Or was it not about the forces, but about the, his origin? Eamon couldn't explain the strange heat coming from that creature. She is. She's wary. That's why she's giving him drinks and talking to him. Probing her prey. Is the prey? Ah, Livius, me too. Livius chuckled nervously and then told Eamon everything he knew. Damn! Told Eamon the necessary amount, remained mysteriously silent. Everything, we never ever tell everything. This is not having secret requiem with our MC. Like, I'm sorry. I had to listen to many people complain that I'm being too hard on her. But in my eyes, she don't know how to play her cards right. So... We tell people the necessary amount. Like, I'm telling you what you need to know. I'm looking out for you, everything. But never ever tell anyone everything you know. Because privacy, my private life. Livius realized he needed to bring Eamon up to speed without revealing Eva's secrets, so he said evasively. Like, even that though. Like, after Eastman, Livius is our brother. Livius is our best friend. So he gotta keep our secrets, you know? That's not him who's to pray, but rather us. You, her, and I. I thought it was obvious. Her friend is not human, but he's not the snake, a pup in the flesh either. I'm capable of more than you think. Recalling the stories about the gods said in Epep, the healer raised his eyebrows. He's even more powerful than that snake. Don't anger him, my men, until you figure out what everyone is after. Do you know anything about him? Tell me, Livius of Paella, we're on the same side. Are we? That's right, we're on the same side, but I don't know much about him. His name is Seth, and Eva owes him a great debt. Mm-hmm. For something. I think a lot of what she does is not by choice. Oh, God, <laughs> that's gonna make him upset. Is that the roots of the game? Uh, yeah. Eamon pursed his lips, but admittedly reluctantly to himself that he felt relieved. Eva was close to Livius, so he was probably telling the truth. 
She had lied to the episodes, committed many offenses behind his back and kept silent about it, but knowing that she wasn't doing it of her own free will because she got into a terrible situation, the episodes realized that she still had a chance to earn his forgiveness. Huh. He hardly recognized himself. If it were anyone else, Eamon would have ground them to dust for lying and betraying him. Damn. We did say we are his wound point. But when it came to Eva, he looked for any little thing that could justify her reckless behavior. Yeah, love her. How could he justify his weakness? Uh, you can't. That's like the reason here. You're in love. You can't change it. His musings were interrupted by another thought. Though threats of pressure said had made Eva submit to his will. Yeah, that made his Amon's blood boil. Yes, what did I say? He's threatening her. Pressuring her. I'll kill him. Ooh In love. In love with this. So protective. So worried. I thought as much. Olivia told Eamon the most important things avoided the details Eva would have preferred to keep hidden. They were friends, so the healer tried to cover for her as best he could, but he still felt compelled to tell something to the epistates for his peace of mind. Olivia told Eamon very little. Your friendship with the healer has improved, and Eamon is grateful to him. Aww. Meanwhile, Agnia and Seth were talking. The god of chaos and the desert had a lot to discuss with the wanderer since he loved roaming around the wilderness just like she did. He rarely came across mortals who could hold an interesting conversation. Most of them knew no farther than their settlement. And they were only concerned about family needs and primitive matters. But Seth was talking idly, mostly to kill time and learn more about the people he planned on using. Because Sparta is not what it used to be. They're getting weaker. You're used to taking other people's things. And Carius, your god of luck won't be helping you forever. Do you believe in our gods? The pantheon is large and numerous. How could I not? But the days are numbered. As are us. Agnia laughed, not realizing who she was talking to. I saw you fight. You shouldn't fear death. If you died, it would probably be the weight of your years crushing you. Woohoo! Someone like you probably can't even get sick. Said Grin, putting the cup to his lips. There are other things that can kill me that you don't even know about. Agnia drank too, hanging on every word. Livius knew what she was doing. The conversation only appeared to be friendly at first glance. They were all hiding their motives, but tried to stay on good terms with each other as long as they were going the same way. Livius knew that the only person he could trust beside Eva was, unexpectedly, Eamon. He supported the royal power despite being strict. He was equally honest and fair, which couldn't be said with certainty about either Set or Agnia. Let's join forces! <laughs> oh god, not Livius and Eamon finding peace with each other. I can't. I will miss the jealousy sauce. Let's join forces. Livy said it quietly, bringing the hunter's attention back to himself. Eamon was taken aback for a moment. He raised his eyebrows but didn't say anything. He better stay silent because, bitch, you both want the same thing. For Seth to leave. <laughs> for him to go where he came from. No, that's the last thing you expected me to say. Do you hate me that much? That's too big a word for simple dislike. <laughs> He kind of had this dislike because he had feelings for us and uh, he saw that we were close to Livia's. So there was this jealousy making him dislike him. But he don't hate him. Do you think I grew up in luxury surrounded by love and happiness? Or are you angry at my self-confidence? I get tired of how much you talk without knowing anything about life. Why are you jumping to conclusions? Everyone's talking about how perceptive you are. Why are you so sure because I'm neatly dressed and have all my teeth? Ooh! Period, though. He kind of is saying that he's superficial. Because sadly, that's how life is. Like, everyone just thinks of you what they see. Like, they see you being all happy and living your best life, so they expect you not to have any problems. 
But that's not all there is. Like, just because I'm depressed, just to put an example out there, like, that's the flaw in general in our society. People assume when we don't cry all the time, even though we're depressed, that we're pretending. Like, being depressed is not a sickness. As in, even though I am depressed and it's actually taking a huge ass tool on my mental health, it does not mean that I can't be happy sometimes. Like, this is just a perception that all the people have when they think of depression. Like, they think that you are so crazy that you need to be locked up in a mental institution. Like, that's not all there is. And just because Livius is not immediately showing how hard life has been on him, it does not mean that this man doesn't know what grief is or what struggling with life is. Contrary to your belief, my life was far from perfect and my future was bleak. Glory to Zeus, I wasn't poor, but I worked hard to achieve everything else. Eamon sighed heavily. Are you trying to justify yourself to me? Stay the way you are, don't try to appear better. Better? I saved people's life and I gave up everything to help the locals and Tibas, although I could have stayed close to the pharaoh, snug as a buck. How much better can I be? Period. Silence, bitch. Like he is. Right, and he's making a valid point. Like sometimes, especially if someone is extremely pride, the only way to actually make them snap out of their delulu mind is you to hit them with reason. Like he had everything. He wasn't poor. He was born with money. And he was close to the pharaoh because his mentor was close to the pharaoh. Like he had a good position. He didn't need to come here and risk his life because we're literally at the center of the illness. So he's actually risking his life being here and trying to help the people that actually have been infected and him trying to figure out what what is going on, like how that illness is spreading and etc. Like he is risking his life and him actually making this point actually makes Eamon shut up because he's like, shit, he has a point. What do you think taught these men how to prepare healing ointments for you? Do you think my young apprentice knew what to mix and how to do it? I showed him everything so that he could help you. Eamon all but rolled his eyes, realizing why Livius and Eva got along so well. Yeah, because we need to have the last word. <laughs> sorry. Like, I'm sorry, he is right. Like, this man is literally rolling his eyes because he's annoyed by the fact that this man is a good guy. I get it. The episode's nodded at his cut so that the healer wouldn't stop working while he was talking. Livia soaked the linen cloth with ointment and continued. Whether you like me or not, you know that I'm one of the few people here who can hel- rely on. Even if I thought so, it was before you ran away. Somebody tried to kill me, and the hunter you assigned to me didn't help. I accompanied Evites only to protect her. You've got nothing to charge me with. Period. Shut him up. I love this. That, though. Like, he even protected the woman you love. Like, he really is losing all the reasons to hate him. And that's making him even more mad. Let's help each other. You know where this is going. The disease, the alert, this creature. You need me. Do I need you or do you need me? You need each other, actually. Yeah. Both. I'm clearly better at communicating with people than you are. I inspire trust, and I can be cunning. And you? Ooh, you got muscles. You created breaking. <laughs> Livius, you did not have to be me. I know she's dear to you. Period. I'm in love with him. I love Livius. Livius is so pure, and I love the logic. Like in general. I said it so many times, but I feel the need to point it out again. I don't fall in love with the face. I fall in love with the personality. If there's something I find extremely attractive in a person, then when they literally just accepted who they are and they are proud of what they've become, like life is tough on everyone and everyone learns things in a different way, like mostly sadly through traumatic experiences, through negative experiences. And we all learn differently because of that. Like those negative experiences, they 
shape us into the person we are and there are a lot of people that decide to use like that negativity and that turns them into a bad person and uh, they actually use their past in order to aspire like pain in other people because they never found a way to deal with their own so they feel good about making other people feel bad about themselves so that they don't really need to think about the own pain that they're going through And then there are people, and those are the people that I like, that actually go through traumatic experiences. They sadly have to go through it. They need to heal because of that. But then they use that moment and that negativity, like what they could draw from that. They use that negative experience to draw strength and wisdom. And they use that to build them, as in to make them stronger, to make them more mature, more wise. And they use all that in order to be a better person, as in they use that to commit good in the world. Like they don't allow that negativity that happened in their life to turn them bitter. They use that as life teaching them something for what they will need in the future. And that's something I find attractive. And Livius is a person like that. And besides, who doesn't love a man who can bitch slap someone? Please. Like he's bitch slapping him just left and right. Eamon has no idea where to turn. He's always there. Even though she's a shishmu. Even though she's a lousy scribe. You level any city to the ground for her sake. <laughs> he knows. Don't make that face. It's obvious. I don't even have to make sure. You love her. Don't you? Oh, I'm in love with this conversation. You've taken it too far. This doesn't concern you. He is her best friend, son. If you want her, you need to go through him. He is that kind of person, isn't he? Oh, period. Love him. I really do. Like, honestly, y'all. If uh, Eamon is done, like I'm still contemplating, but I feel like Eamon won this round. I think I did two polls and you all continue to say that you want Eamon's version. I think my second one will be Livia's because I love this man. I'll take that as a yes, which means we have another reason to trust each other. I'm a close friend and you are dear to her heart. Then why should we be enemies? Eamon jerked his head and gritted his teeth, but he replied anyway. You're right, Livius. We'll see how that goes. The healer could barely suppress a grin. The episode had used his first name only. You know what will happen if you deceive me. Um, okay. Well, you wouldn't be you if you didn't end the conversation with the threat. <laughs> Eamon and Livius are now allies. Their relationship has improved. Oh, I'm in love with this. Like seeing Eamon and Livia's team up after all the telenovela bullshit that they pulled with each other. Oh, I'm living. Livia's finished with the hunter's injuries. Set stretched. Livia's offered to help him with his wound again, but he waved the healer off. I'll sort it out myself. Ooh. I'm in love with this. Yeah, this man immediately dropped his eyes, huh? Seth noticed that Eamon was watching him, grinned pointedly, but received no response. He failed to provoke the hunter. Where's Evities? Did you lose track of time chatting? What? You know everything? Chatting? With whom? Eamon rose slowly, menacingly. I forgot to tell you, just take it easy. What is it now? <laughs> The episodes pushed Livius aside. Who's she chatting with? You're here. Oh, he didn't know either. It was at that moment that they heard footsteps on the other side of the canopy. Surprise, bitch, but you thought you'd seen the last of me. Eva couldn't have chosen a better moment to step outside. She wanted to assess the situation first, but she was discovered, and not just her. Oops. When Eva saw everyone looking at her questioningly, she struggled to find the right words to start the conversation. Are you all here? I have something to tell you. Behind her was... Ramesses. You! Yes. Another shishmu. 
I can't. Seth needs to stop. What are Mrs? Eamon took a step forward, but Eva immediately put out her hands. Don't get angry. He's harmless. He can even help us. Did he sneak in here? And you kept quiet about it. I mean, son, it's been like, what, five minutes? Relax. Eamon's gaze lingered briefly on Eva, who was also looking him straight in the eye. They couldn't talk there, but even a brief glance from the episodes was enough. You kept quiet. What else do you know that you're not telling me? How many more lies will you tell? Oh my god, but this man is also insanely paranoid. He's fed. Don't you dare look at me like that. As if I helped Apip and not found someone who will tell us more about Saumon. I'm starting to get tired of being the wrong, devious, evil one, period. Me too, sis. Who knows what I might have become if I hadn't studied dark magic. Would you have fallen in love with me? Would we have met at all? Amos of frustration flashed across her face, not an ounce of guilt. Not this man actually sizing her up like this face literally goes off condescending. Agnia raised the cup above her head. Calm down, everyone. The boy can tell us about the dead Sheshmu. I'm not a boy. Am, 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 am. Ramesses. Right, the man. Is that what I should call you? Ramesses glared at the mercenary. He had this grungled, scrutinizing look in his eyes. Eva had never seen him look at anyone like that before. Like, uh, Ramesses is done with his life. Like, he needs some time to heal, and he can, so... Uh, the people that he talks to right now will have to <laughs> deal with the consequences of his... Rough, you know? Ramau's death must have broken something inside him, or knocked out the last remnants of his fear. Of course, again. I know how to ask. It's more pleasant to do it the nice way. You don't have to do that. Don't hesitate. Kill him right away, bitch. You don't have to do that. It will be faster and more pleasant this way. But pleasant for whom? Why do you think I would care? You should try new methods, epistates. The same path will lead to the same results, period, to people running away. Eva balled her hands into fists, Seth's lips slowly stretched into a grin. Oh, of course, he would be proud. She never behaved like that in front of him. But his presence gave her boldness and courage and helped her be less afraid. I mean, let's be real. If we uh, compare Seth and Eamon, then Seth wins with the scary part. She probably got used to the fact that her patron would be protecting her from any misfortune until she paid her debt and decided to check how far she could go. Now this man just living his best life and honestly I'm living for the fact that he's here so he can actually see that we do not care. Or maybe she even hoped for something more. As if there was a stronger tie between them beyond her debt causing Seth to be concerned about her rather than save her out of cold calculation. Well that's my mistake because I played. It amused him even more. That's right Eva. Let him have it. Oh, I can't with this man. He needs to stop. The sand where Ramau's body had been was empty. Where's the body? <laughs> I can't. Set. He did not have to be like that. He said, bitch, I do it like the rats. I take the body. Brother? Of taking care of everything. <laughs> what did I say? He said, I take him. Taken care? Do you touch the corpse? We didn't have to. Oh? I did. You worked and praised my name. And I'm entitled to his body. So I made sure that he found peace and got into the duet. Eamon gritted his teeth, removed the cloth from his wound, and threw it aside. Livius, who had just dressed that wound, winced with indignation. <laughs> He's like, excuse me? The episodes bellowed, making everyone except Agnia and said jump. That's enough. No one will move until I get answers to all my questions. Enough of these games. Son, he does not have to answer to you. If we share a common goal, no one will take a step without my knowledge. I want to know everything. Interrogation through threats. Have you chosen your usual tacts? Hunter? Are you trying to scare? Things are different out here than in the settlement. The royal power loses its authority on the outskirts of cities and in the open desert of the endless expanses. Evita is here with me. What can you do to her? Or to me? 
Seth was pleased to feel Eva's growing confidence at hearing his words. But Eamon's rage at Seth's words made Eva a little less sure of herself. Seth turned to Eva. Like, it's a fact. We belong to his sorry ass, sadly. So what does he actually want to do to us, honestly? Come on, prove that you are a brave girl and not just pretending. Tell him what he wants to know. Otherwise the episodes will get angry and I'll have to save you again. Do you really want me to kill him? Ah! Eva, you'd better share everything you know. Yes, share everything, little Sheshmu. I fucking hate this. Like, we're put on the spot and we have nothing. Uh, we, we can't do anything, y'all. It's you who'll die for your words. Oh, God. Agnia glanced at the jug of Hecate. It was strong, rich, and the red-haired wanderer had drunk a lot, yet he was perfectly steady on his feet. It certainly wasn't what she had expected. Who was he? A little more and said would get into a fight with Eamon again, but that time the outcome would be much worse. By the cunning, Eva didn't have time to think, so she did what she was particularly good at. Talk! No one has to die. We're all upset and tired. You take a breath. Relax. And I'll tell you everything you need to know. Levis immediately recognized the intonation Eva used when she wanted to stall for time and pull the wool over someone's eyes. I just didn't want to dump this on you, especially when things are so tense to put it mildly. So listen to me before you get into a fight or start arguing with each other. Eamon made a dismissive gesture. Just speak, this is too long a promo for Eva. She bit her lip, wondering how to begin. After all, everyone was looking for Simon Hempstead, and only Eva, who had dealt with everyone present, knew that. The others were convinced that they were enemies. She needed to say the right things. We're all connected. How do I put <laughs> We're all connected. As Seth said, it all comes down to the one person that each of you is looking for. Many years ago, his servant ran away, found a way to hide from his master, and joined a close society of dark magicians to become one of the elders. Eva hesitated, not knowing how to outline Eamon's goal without revealing that she knew about his childhood and personal tragedy. Seth helped her out. This is the same dark magician who killed your family, Hunter. Isn't he the one you've been looking for all this time? Wasn't it because of him that you chose to serve the pharaoh? He did just say that his parents are Sheshmu. How do you know all of this? I'm perceptive and I know a lot. Agnia and Ramesses listened attentively. Up to that moment, they hadn't known about the real reason for the episode's hatred towards Sheshmu. Ha ha ha. Eva quickly joined in. The stark magician came to Tebus for some reason. I think to curse Upper Egypt, and the disease is his handiwork. Livius is looking for its source, which means he's also looking for the Shishmu. Agnia, did you say you were also looking for the one responsible for the curse? Yes, the person I worked for who sent me to Egypt paid for me to get to the bottom of it. A person from Antica? The mercenary destruct, she wouldn't tell. He's not alone. There are several of them, and they're all fed up with this disease as it has appeared at the worst possible time. Eva made sure to remember Agnia's words and continued. Renown! He's somewhere in the area, from what I know. He cursed Tebus and forced Ramao to set fire to the Ebo and kill me. He's responsible for everything that's happening. You're all looking for Samon Hempstead. Everyone is impressed with your speech. <laughs> you prevented an argument. I'm so sorry, y'all. This is so funny to me. Because to me, it's like just normal, but maybe... Your ability to manipulate people has increased. I oh, thank you. Hem, Seth. Since the dark magician we've been tracking is dead, the chance of finding this salmon are as small as the male appendage of the Satius in Antica. Ramos has immediately perked up. No, you have something else that someone really needs. You didn't tell them the main thing either. What is it? You sent my brother to find Levius and bring him to him. Ooh. <laughs> Livius, he wants your ass. He's looking for you. He needs you for some reason. Eamon met Livius' case, remembering the incident in the settlement and what had happened to one of his hunters. The matter also concerned the epistates, since he and the healer had agreed to help each other. But the sky was already turning pink, and the sun's disk was rising slowly from the horizon. Eva looked at Eamon and said softly, It's almost dawn. Your skin... 
It's fine. What do we do next? Go back to the settlement. It's over. With two dark magician and this. <laughs> he actually said to said it's an it. No one except Tidian knows what exactly we're doing. I can execute them and the squad won't understand. We haven't lost track of Salmon. It's early to hide in your little hunting lodge. We can go to the place where my brother and I were hiding. It's in the city. There I'll tell you everything I've learned about his mentor. In the city? Yes, it's someone's house. A real house? God, I'd be happy to sprawl on something soft. If it's a trap, you'll die before you think about hurting anyone. Bitch, he's alone. And I'm Mrs. Race's eyebrows, thinking that the hunter was being unfair and cruel. I don't have anything left. I'm all alone. What reason do I have to harm anyone? I never even met the someone in Thebes. Do you think I work for him? Whose house is it? You have to promise that you won't get in trouble. She? Ooh, that's Neith's house in Thebes. Neith? Naaman frowned, trying to remember where he had heard the name, and then his face fell. Neith? Neith the Weaver? Eamon purses, lips shaking his head, let it all go to East, but he'll deal with that later. He needed to learn all he could and use every opportunity that would lead him to Samon, even if it meant being surrounded by people he really didn't like for a while. It was even better that way. Even Livius would stay in his sight, he wouldn't have let them go anyway. And that strange man Set could be extremely useful, right? Set will not do or say anything if he don't feel like it, so I think you need to relax. Agnea, take a horse and go to the nearest post. Take the horses from the hunters. Who patrol there, four should be enough for us. But there are six of us. Uh, one uh, needs to be with someone else. We'll double up. I'm riding alone. Yes, you're riding alone. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I can't with this fighting. Should I tell them there's no one to look for anymore? No, let them give Titi and my message, but they shouldn't leave their posts. If the Shishu is right and Simon is still around, let them check everyone who leaves the city. Emma went under the canopy to ride to Titi and Agnia went to get Eva and Livia's horse and they stayed waiting for the others. The hell. Beautiful horses. This choice will improve your friendships or romantic relationships. When all was done, the morning light had already turned the endless desert pink. For horses and six riders, they had to split up. Eva wrote with Eamon Livius said, Bitch. <laughs> Y'all, I don't know what to do. I want to write with Seth so badly. And with Livius too. At this point, honestly, I hope you all will forgive me if I do this. I'm gonna write... Oof. Like, these three men are tempting me, y'all. And as much as I love Ramesses, Ramesses has been out of the trouble. He has been out of the telenovela bullshit. Let's, let us keep him out of it. And Agnia is our bestie. Like, let's leave her be. Aim and Livius and Set are tempting me. They really are. I can't choose between them. I really can't. Like, every single episode makes me treasure all three of them more and more. Right now, I'm pissed at Eamon. And at this moment, considering we're still on edge with each other, I feel like being with him right now would only stir more shit up, even though this is like a romantic choice. But I already dumped Livius in the first episode of season two. I can't continue to play with this man, but they said it would also improve friendship matters, but with all the choices that I made, with like choosing romantic relationship and bullshit, I'm scared to pick Livius right now. Even though between Eamon and said like, if three, if two fight, the three is the lucky one. A the only one that actually did everything right was Livius. This man was minding his own motherfucking business. <laughs> so at this point, at this point, I'm a slave. I'm a slave to the rhythm. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
They took everything they needed from under the canopy. Eamon wasn't surprised when Orion pressed against Eva's leg. He ran away with you. How could he not? And I'm not leaving him here. Pick him up so that he doesn't slow us down. Orion. The dog lay happily on her lap and she thought miserably that she would have to hold his weight all the way to Tebus. Such a sacrifice can only be made out of pure love. Eamon hurried everyone along when the sun began beating down on his skin. We need to get there early so that there are not too many people in the streets and no one sees us. At last they set out. Well, happens. Tiva sometime later. Eamon rode alone ahead of them, followed by Livius next to Ramesses and Ignia, who was watching the Shishmu. Said and Eva brought up the rare. Seth seated her in front of him to hold her and held the reins with both hands. Eva was enveloped in his embrace. She found it somewhat comforting, feeling protected shielding from the dangers of the world. Remau could have killed me. Remau couldn't have killed me, could he? No. I wouldn't have killed him before that. Ooh! But don't you feel sorry for him? He was your follower, like the other Shishmu, said Ark in eyebrow. It doesn't matter who he was. The Shishmu raised a hand to you. He had to die. Ooh! <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I love it when men get protected, y'all. I love it when men get protective. I really do. Because it's also a... Uh, capability that got lost over the centuries i feel it's about my death right you won't let me die before my time she felt Seth's chest vibrating behind her back as he laughed softly yes and the fact that you're a very pretty little shishmu i would really hate it if someone wanted to hurt you eva almost flinched when said bit her ear lightly my apologies. I set myself up for the heartache. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> uh, Why are you attracting attention? I can't. Y'all, honestly, I'm seeing Kane in front of me. I really am. Because Kane also has like this laid back attitude, never showing too much interest, never showing how he truly feels, but at the end of the day, he still behaves the way that he would want to, which is impulsive and protective. Lay a hand on her, you die. <laughs> like, honestly, Remau slit his throat. He bled out in the fields. And we saw a huge ass hurricane, a huge ass sandstorm and that was just set collecting this man's body he was like no stone left unturned you are not remaining here he actually said i have a right to his body <laughs> i can't be obedient yes daddy eva hunched her shoulders and puts out y'all i'm so sorry but at this point i know that every single one of you wants to hear those comments so i don't regret anything Seth's behavior was difficult to predict. His spontaneity and arrogance made it impossible to guess his next move. And that's exactly the two things that I love the most about him. Like, as much as it's dangerous when someone is extremely unpredictable because they are extremely impulsive, it's also a hot personality trait. Because you being impulsive doesn't necessarily have to mean that you use it for like bad things, as in like allowing anger to spread. But it also means that you don't hesitate to show how you truly feel about someone. You are spontaneous in showing your emotions, as in when someone provokes you, you don't mind showing ownership. That doesn't mean that this is like a toxic thing and the person in front of you or more like the person that you like will actually be closed in in like this cage because you feel that protective and that jealous when they are close to someone else. No. When you are impulsive, you just show. The second that someone provokes you or touches the very few things that you truly care about, you explode. Like, you don't just sit idly by and just watch the scene. You immediately react. Eva felt sad, put one hand on her knee and whisper, You went quiet right away. So calm and embarrassed. 
I really like you, Em. Excuse you? Your presence makes the dullness of Upper Egypt more bearable. What? <laughs> she didn't reply to him, choosing instead to look at the road. <laughs> Amen, sis. Me too. Your relationship was set as improved. Oh, thank you. When they reached their destination, Agnia hit the horses and the episodes entered the house first to carefully inspect it and fend off the attack in case of danger. I'll be back later. What? This bitch said I'm leaving. Where are you going? I have things to do. I won't waste time while you rest. Oh, Eva turned to Eamon. Let him go, Epistates. Don't hold him back. This man is so upset about this. <laughs> well, y'all, I need to stir shit up. Like, if the story makers don't make the story naturally dramatic, I need to help. Did you hear the little shush? <laughs> You'll be sleeping and eating anyway. I have nothing to do here. I'll come back when you're ready. Without asking permission, said when father down the street, his gait light and confident. Then why did you come with him? <laughs> <laughs> because he's a dramatic bitch. Do we have to lift to Tebus? <laughs> Eamon crossed his arms, watching said go. He nodded at the house. Get inside quickly before you wake everyone up. Ooh, look at this. When everyone was inside, they agreed to rest a little, eat, wash up, sleep. The house was small and they did everything in turn and quickly so as not to waste time. Eva was allowed to sleep in the next room while the others were busy. She fell asleep the moment her head touched a pillow. Her recent experiences had exhausted her and so passed in a few hours. Later, Ignea woke her up so that Eva could join the others for lunch. Livius had some food left, which she had taken from the settlement. The healer cooked something simple and then called the others to the table. Eva had a quick wash in the small home bath with what water she had left. Then she started rummaging through her bags to find something to change into. By purchasing a full look in the style of a character, you will improve any relationship you have with that character. Ah. Ooh, kitty, <laughs> a deer, rebellious nephered. Oh, a nephered is little sheshmu. <laughs> I know little sheshmu is fourth. Um, set, charming ten mid. I have the feeling that this is for Ramesses, kitty. Since Agnia called us that, that's for her. Dear? Uh, no idea. Oh, dear may be Livius. Rebellious Nefret is definitely Aemon. And little Sheshmu, I mean, honestly, y'all, I'm tempted. And honestly, we would actually look like Aemon. <laughs> Ooh, but they're extremely expensive, y'all. Ooh. Do I even need to improve anything at this point? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Ooh. Greek style. I like the braids. Yes, I was weak with the hair, okay? A little sleepy, she joined the others. Finally, when everyone sat down at the table, the episode spoke. Now that we've caught our breath, tell me what you know, Shashmu. Have you seen Samon? Do you know where he is? Ramesses, who sat opposite the hunter, nodded. There's yes, a lot to tell you about Samon. Ooh. And he said, I leave it with a bang. Have fun waiting till the next episode, bitches. In love. Ramesses has always been an icon. But yeah, 
That was it for this episode. I can't. I love that Ramesses is finally back. We got our bestie back after Eastman left us. I'm so excited. So let's see what the next episode will be like. I hope you enjoyed this video with me. Tell me if you can want me to continue stirring shit between Eamon, Livius, and Sid. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.